Hi everyone, we're taking a look at AP Review 10 today. Um, problem number one, this one's called differential equations. So I imagine we're going to be seeing a lot of differential equations and solving differential equations here. Um, we did some of that in AP Review 9, but now we're going to be applying these differential equations. And I definitely would expect something like this on the AP exam this year. Okay, so coffee pot in the shape of a cylinder show that dh dt equals negative root h over 5. Okay, so we're told here that the volume of coffee dv dt is changing at negative 5 pi root h. And we know uh, pi r squared h is the volume of this coffee pot. We also know that the radius is constant here, and I plug in constants before I take derivatives. So 25 pi h. Now I take the derivative of both sides with respect to time. I've got dv dt equals 25 pi. Don't forget to take the derivative of this, not with respect to h, but with respect to time. So this is going to be dh dt. We'll plug in what we know, negative 5 pi root h equals 25 pi dh dt. We're supposed to show that dh dt is this, so let's divide by 25 pi. I see these cancel, I see the 5's cancel, and so I have negative root h over 5 equals dh dt. And so there's part a. A. What about part B? Given that h equals 17 at time equal to 0, solve this differential equation. Okay, so we've got this dh dt, and they would like us to solve this differential equation. So I'm going to have dh over h to the 1 half equals negative 1 fifth dt. Then I'm going to integrate, and this one is the same as h to the negative 1 half. So this is going to be h to the 1 half with a 2 out in front. And here I have negative 1 fifth t plus c. Uh, what do we know? We know that at time equal to 0, h is 17. So I've got 2 root 17 equals negative 1 fifth 0 plus c. So c equals 2 root 17. All right, so then we'll come over here and we'll say 2h to the 1 half equals negative 1 fifth t plus 2 root 17. We'll divide everywhere by 2. h to the 1 half equals t over 10 plus root 17, and then we'll square both sides. h equals root 17 minus t over 10 squared. There's our particular solution, uh, h of t, and that's part b. And what about part c? At what time is the coffee pot empty? At what time is the coffee pot empty? Well, I want to know when v equals 0. Oh, I want to know when h equals 0. I want to know when the height of the coffee is 0. So 0 equals square root of 17 minus t over 10 squared. I take the square root of both sides. I get t over 10 equals root 17 where t equals 10 root 17. Okay, so that's when the coffee pot is empty. Um, they don't ask me to justify. They just ask for a time. I've given them a time. There's problem number one. Problem number two. Uh, beginning 2010, landfill contained uh, W of 0 is 1,400 tons. Uh, an increasing function, yes, because we just create more and more waste. dw dt equals 1 over 25 
w minus 300 for the next 20 years. Okay, so uh, use appropriate, oh, use the tangent line to approximate the waste at the end of the first three months of 2010. Okay, so tangent line. Well, tangent line needs a point, and tangent line needs a slope at that point. So at, now, careful, this is a W. This is a time, this is a W. I have to plug the W in there. So 1 over 25, 1400, minus 300 is 1100 over 25. Um, uh, I think I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, so there's my slope. And so my tangent line is um, y minus 1400 equals 1100 over 25 t minus 0. Okay, so y minus 1400 equals 1100 over 25 t. Well, isn't that 44? Let's just check. There's 25, 1100, um, 4, 100, 104. Yes. So this could be this. Okay. And so W equals 44T plus 1400, and we want to know y of 1 fourth, which is 44 times 1 fourth plus 1400, or 1411 tons. Okay, that's part A. What about part B? Find the second derivative in terms of w. Use to determine whether your answer was an underestimate or overestimate. So here they're asking me about, uh, about the second second derivative test. Remember, we know, uh, we know, oh, is that what that's asking me? Underestimate or overestimate? Okay, well, let's think about that. I just wrote a tangent line, and if I show that the tangent line is below the curve, then this is an underestimate, and if I show that the tangent line is above the curve, then the tangent line is an overestimate. So I'm looking to find the concavity to see if the second derivative is positive, then this estimate here is an underestimate, if the second derivative is negative and w is concave down, then the tangent line is an overestimate. Okay, so if I take the derivative of this, I get um, dw two, 1 over 25. The derivative of that with respect to time is dw dt, and the derivative of that is 0. Now dw dt is 1 over 25 w minus 300. Okay, and so I've got uh, at this place uh, 1400. So I've got 1100 over 25 squared. That's a positive number. And so the second derivative is greater than zero. Therefore, um, W is concave up, so tangent approximation is an underestimate. Okay, we've got an underestimate 
for our tangent line approximation because our second derivative is greater than zero. Okay, part C. Part C says find a particular solution. Okay, so we've got uh, dw dt equals 1 over 25 w minus 300. dw over w minus 300 equals 1 over 25 dt. I get ln w minus 300 equals t over 25 plus c. I exponentiate. I get W minus 300 equals plus and minus E to the C, E to the T over 25, plus and minus E to the C equals B. And so I get W minus 300 equals B, E to the T over 25. Now, we have this initial condition at T equal to 0, W equals 1400. So let's plug that in. 1100 equals B e to the 0, and so we get b equals 1100, so w equals 300 plus 1100 e to the t over 25. Hey, that's like the Wolves problem that we did. Um, do we have to do anything else? No, that's it. That's our particular solution to this problem, uh, and we're all done with number 2. Let's take a look at problem number three. Problem number three, and we've only got eight here. Uh, problem number three, baby bird gains weight. D, B, D, T, that's the change in the weight of the bird with respect to time, is one-fifth, 100 minus B. Okay, part A. B is the solution to the differential equation, where B of 0 equals 20. Uh, is the bird gaining weight faster when it weighs 40 grams or when it weighs 70 grams? Okay, so part A, dB dt of 40 equals 1 over 5, 100 minus 40, which is 1 over 5 times 60, or... 12 grams per day. Is it days? Is it days? Yes. Um, and then what about dB dt when b equals 70? Okay, so that's 1 over 5, 100 minus 70 is 1 over 5 times 30, which equals 6 grams per day. Gains weight faster when it is 40 grams than 70 grams. And we've shown some work to support that. Okay. Um, this is the explanation of my reasoning that they were looking for. Because um, D, B, D, T, evaluated at B equals 40, is greater than D, B, D, T, evaluated when B equals 70. All right, part A. Part B says, find the second derivative. Okay, so D, B, D, T equals 1 over 5, 100 minus B. Um, that's 20 minus 1 fifth b. So the second derivative is going to be negative 1 fifth times the derivative of b with respect to t, which is negative 1 fifth times 1 fifth 100 minus b, which is negative 100 minus b over 25. Now, um, on B between 0 and 100, um, this is always going to be 
this is less than zero, so d dt is less than zero always, which means um, b must always be concave down the given graph has a change in concavity. Okay, so that's why the graph given, that logistic looking graph, can't be our graph because our second derivative is always negative on 0 to 100. And because our second derivative is always negative, our original b function, what they've given me a picture of, should always be concave down. The given picture is not always concave down, so that can't be the actual b function. Okay, part c. Use separation of variables to find b of t. Look, they even told you to find that you use separation of variables here. They're desperate for you to do that. dB dt equals one fifth one hundred minus b, and we know that b of zero equals twenty. Okay, so we'll do separation of variables like they said. One hundred minus b equals. Didn't we have that in the last problem? Did I integrate that improperly? No, it wasn't 300 minus, it was w minus 300. Watch out for this integral. Okay, uh, 1 fifth dt. So we integrate both sides. And over here we get 1 fifth t plus c. But over here, watch out, because it's not this. It's that. Remember, if you took the derivative of this, you'd have the derivative of the outside, 1 over stuff, but then you'd have the derivative of the inside, negative d. You'd have a negative 1. There's no negative 1 here, so there must be a negative out in front of this. Please move this to the other side to make your life much easier. Negative 1 t c. Uh, exponentiate. So we've got 100 minus b equals plus o. Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah, I don't want to play that. I'm just going to go back to this and say c is just a constant, and when I multiply everything by negative, it's still some constant. Plus and minus e to the negative 1 fifth t e to the C. I guess I could say this. Yeah, I know you want this. Negative C. And so then I'm going to say plus or minus E to the negative C equals, I've already used B, so I'm going to go with A. So I've got 100 minus B equals A E to the negative 1 fifth T. Okay, and we've got the initial condition 0 and 20 here, right? 0 and 20. So we've got 80 equals a e to the 0. So in fact, I'm going to write 100 minus 20. So I know that a, therefore, a equals 20. So I can write then the equation 100 minus b equals 20 e to the minus t over 5 or b equals 100 minus 20 e to the minus t over 5. That is my equation for 3c. Sorry, 100 minus 20 is 80. And so this is 80, and this is 80. Great. OK, number four. Let's take a look at number four. Four says, uh, consider the closed curve 
x squared plus 2x plus y to the fourth plus 4y equals 5. Show that dy dx equals negative x plus 1 over 2 y squared plus. Is that y to the third plus 1? Okay, so I need to take the derivative of this. Um, that's going to be 2x plus 2 plus 4y to the third times, don't forget the derivative of the inside, y with respect to x, plus 4 derivative of y with respect to x equals 0. I'm going to move this stuff to the other side, and so I'm going to have 4y to the third dy dx plus 4 dy dx equals negative 2 minus 2. I'm going to take a negative 2 out of that and have 1, uh, x plus 1. Now, that's what this is equal to, and over here I can pull out a dy dx and get 4y to the third plus 4. So if I divide both sides by 4y to the third plus 4, in fact I can pull out that 4, I can pull this down to 2, and then I'm done. Here's part A. Okay, part B, write the equation of the tangent line to the point negative 2, comma 1. Well, we've got an ordered pair. We just need a slope. They told me that dy dx was negative x plus 1 over 2, y to the third plus 1. Let's plug in our ordered pair. And so we've got negative, negative 2 plus 1 over 2, 1 to the third plus 1. So I've got negative 1 times negative is positive, And I've got 1 plus 1 is 2 times 2 is 4. So y minus 1 equals 1 fourth x plus 2. There's part b. Part B for number, excuse me, number um, four is this tangent line equation. Great. How about part C? Is it possible for the curve to have a horizontal tangent where the curve intersects the x-axis? Where the curve intersects the x-axis. Let's think about that phrase for a moment. If the curve intersects the x-axis, then the y value of the curve is 0. So I'm going to put in zeros here. And I'm going to get x squared plus 2x equals 5. Or x squared hmm, plus 2x minus 5 equals 0. I don't want to do the quadratic formula. <laughs> but I fear I might need to. Um, so, oh, I forgot part C. Well, I'll have to come back to part C. So here, uh, minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 times 1 times c all over 2a. Negative 2 plus or minus square root of 24 over 2 which is negative 2 plus or minus 2 root 6 over 2, which is negative 1 plus or minus root 6. Okay, now, what else do we know? Um, that was, is it possible to have horizontal tangents? So this would be my x value. So if I plug that into... Um, uh, what did we know about our derivative? Oh yeah, dy dx, we were told, was equal to negative um, x plus 1 over y 3 plus 1 times 2. This derivative is only equal to 0 when the numerator equals 0. So we'll set the numerator equal to 0, negative x minus 1 equals 0 negative x equals 1, x equals negative 1. 
So this line only has a horizontal tangent of negative 1, but that uh, x-axis crossing doesn't happen at negative 1. And so, no, it is not possible um, to have horizontal just no space over here in the corner. It is not possible to have horizontal tangents at the x-intercepts of the curve because the x-ints are negative 1 plus and minus root 6 and ha horizontal tangent is only at x equals negative 1. Okay, now let's go back and do part c. Part c says find the coordinates of two points where the curve is vertical. Where the curve is vertical. Uh, the two points where the curve is vertical. Okay, so uh, if the curve is vertical, then I know that dy dx is undefined. Which means that this equals zero. So that's going to happen when y to the third plus 1 equals 0, or y to the third equals negative 1, or y equals cube root of negative 1, which is negative 1. So when y equals negative 1. Now, what about the x value that goes with that? And they said that there were two ordered pairs. Each of these ordered pairs is going to have a y value of negative 1, but I guess I'm looking for two different x's now. So let's go back to our original, x squared plus 2x plus y to the fourth plus 4y equals 5. And let's plug in our negative 1. So I get x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus 4 equals 5. I got x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 5. I get x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0. I get x plus 4, x minus 2. I get x equals negative 4 and positive 2. And so the ordered pairs are 4, negative 1, and, sorry, negative 4, negative 1, and 2, negative 1. Those are my two places where um, where tangent is vertical. Okay, that was problem number four. Let's take a look at problem number five now. Five. Uh, let f be the function that satisfies f prime equals x square root of f of x. Okay. Uh, where f of 3 equals 25. So I've got an ordered pair. Find f double prime of 3. That's part A. Okay, so f double prime of x, I need the product rule. 1 times square root of f of x plus x times derivative of the outside function, leave the inside alone, times the derivative of the inside function, f prime of x. Now we know what f prime of x is, so I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to get f double prime of x equals square root of f of x plus uh, x times one half times f of x times x times root f of x. 
and we want to know f double prime of 3. So that's square root of f of 3 plus um, 3 squared over 2 f of 3 times square root of f of 3. Okay, that's 25. Square root of 25 is 5 plus 9 halves times 25 times 5. And I'm tempted just to walk away at this point. Um, I guess I could do 225 over 2 plus 1 times 5. But uh, it's 2 over 2, so I have 227 over 2 times 5. And that's going to be... Why um, bother? Did I? Oh, oh, I forgot the negative one half here. Um, so that's to the negative one half power. So that's this one fifth. Okay, so that and that will cancel. Oh, and that makes sense because I have a negative one half and a positive one half. Okay, and square root of 25 is 5 plus 9 halves, and I get 19 halves is f double prime of 3. If I knew there was something in this here, I did a bad derivative. So we want a negative 1 half there. Okay, I remembered the product rule, and I blew the chain away. Sorry about that. Okay, 5a. What about 5b? Write an expression by solving the differential equation with the initial condition. Well, wasn't that nice that they simplified the problem for us? They said dy dx equals x square root of y. So dy over square root of y equals x dx. And I want to integrate. I want to integrate y to the minus 1 half dy equals x squared over 2 plus c. And then over here, uh, this is going to be 2y to the 1 half equals x squared over 2 plus c. Um, they give me the ordered pair 325. Square root of 25 is 5. 5 times 2 square root of 25 equals 3 squared over 2 plus c. So I've got 10 equals 9 halves. 20 halves minus 9 halves, c equals 11 halves. So then 2 square root of y equals x squared over 2 plus 11 halves, which is 2 square root of y equals x squared plus 11 over 2. Square root of y equals x squared plus 11 over 4. And y equals x squared plus 11 over 4, all squared. There's my particular solution to this differential equation. And we're done with 5. What about 6? Six says solutions to the differential equation also satisfy this other thing. dy dx equals xy to the third and second derivative is y to the third, one plus three x squared y squared. Okay, um, let y be the solution where f of 1 equals 2. Great. What do they want me to do? Tangent line at 1. So we've got an ordered pair. All we need is the slope at that point. So dy dx evaluated at 1, 2. It's going to be 1 times 2 to the third, or 8. So my tangent line is going to be y minus 2 equals 8x minus 1. And there's part a.
What about part b? Use that tangent line to approximate f of 1.1. Okay, so if I plug in a 1.1 here, y equals 8 times 1.1 minus 1 plus 2, y equals uh, 8 times 0.1 plus 2, or y equals 2.8. So this is my tangent line approximation of f of 1.1. Okay, and what was I supposed to do with that? Uh, is this greater than or less than the actual value? So I need to take a look at the second derivative. Let's evaluate the second derivative at the point 1, 2 to see whether or not my function is concave down or concave up because that will tell me whether my tangent line is an underestimate or an overestimate. So 2 to the third, 1 plus 3, 1 squared, 2 squared. So I get 8, uh, 4 times 3 is 12, 1 plus 12, and that's greater than 0. Since the second derivative is greater than 0 at 1, 2, the tangent approximation is an underestimate. Okay, 6c, find the particular solution. Okay, let's find that particular solution by doing our separation of variables. y to the third, x dx, we'll integrate integral y to the negative 3 dy equals x squared over 2 plus c. Um, so, you know, uh, be careful with this. We know this is going to go up 1, so that's going to be minus 2. If I took the derivative of a, this, there'd be a negative 2 out in front. I don't see a negative 2 out in front, so this must be over negative 2 equals x squared over 2 plus c. I'm going to multiply everywhere by negative 2, and I'm going to get y to the negative 2 equals negative x squared minus 2c. Um, that's the same as 1 over y squared is negative x squared minus 2c. We're given the ordered pair to work with here, 1 comma 2. So that then gives me 1 over 2 squared equals negative 1 squared minus 2c. 1 fourth equals negative 1 minus 2c. 5 fourths equals negative 2c. Negative 5 eighths equals c. And so let's plug that c value back in here and have 1 over y squared equals negative x squared uh, minus a minus is plus 5 fourths. Okay, and um, I get that 5 fourths. Um, hmm. And I've, I've got a sinking suspicion there's a mistake here. So, um, sorry, calculus sense is tingling. Um, and so then I would have um, y squared equals 1 over 5 fourths minus x squared, or y equals plus or minus square root 1 over 5 fourths minus x squared. If I plug in my point 1, so that's going to be 4 fourths, 1 5 fourths minus 4 fourths is 1 fourth, 1 over 1 fourth is 4, square root of 4 is 2, but I need positive, so this is only the positive version. All right, now, um, 
I think this is sufficient, but let's algebraically tidy it up a bit. Um, we've got square root of 1 over 5 minus 4x squared over 4, which is square root of 1 times 4 over 5 minus 4x squared, which is square root of 4 over square root of 5 minus 4x squared, or 2 over square root of 5 minus 4x squared. Yes, that's what I have in my notes. I think this would be sufficient um, because you've got it in y equals form. Okay, so that's problem number six. How about problem number seven? Um, seven says to us, hey, you've got another curve here. This one is y squared equals two plus xy. Show that dy dx equals y over 2y minus x. So let's take the derivative here. We've got 2y times the derivative of the inside with respect to x. Derivative of this is 0. The derivative here is product rule 1 times y plus x times dy dx. OK, I'm going to move this stuff over here so I get all the dy dx to one side. Uh, 2y dy dx minus x dy dx equals y. And now I'm going to factor out a dy dx and have 2y minus x equals y. And so dy dx equals y over 2y minus x. And we're done with part A. What about part B? Find all the points, ordered pairs, on the curve where the tangent has a slope of 1 half. So I want to know when this is equal to 1 half. Okay, so 2y equals uh, 2y minus x. So negative x equals 0. So when x equals 0, well, if I come back up here and I plug in x equals 0, I end up with y squared equals 2. And so y equals plus and minus root 2. So I've got two places uh, where the slope equals 1 half. And they wanted those as ordered pairs. We've got 0, root 2, and 0, negative root 2 um, are where the tangent has a slope of 1 half. OK, so that's part B. What about part C? Show that there are no points where the tangent line to the curve is horizontal. OK, so if the tangent line was horizontal, then the numerator, 2y minus x, would have to equal 0. Uh, and that only happens when y equals 0. So we'll go back to the equation y squared equals 2 plus x times y. And we'll plug our 0 in. And does 0 equal 2? Nope. Not possible to have dy dx equal to 0 for this curve. OK, that's part C. And what about part D? Let x and y be functions of time. Ooh. So um, y squared equals 2 plus xy. So we've got 2y times dy dt equals, the derivative of this is still 0, now the derivative of this is going to be dx dt times y plus x times dy dt. OK, and what do we know? We find dx dt. This is the thing we're looking for. When t equals 5. 
uh, at t equals 5, y equals 3, y equals 3, and dy dt equals 6. Hey, and I'm looking for dx dt, but I need to know what x is. So I'm going to have to take this y value and plug it into the original equation again, y squared equals 2 plus xy, so that I can solve for this x value. So I get 9 equals 2 plus 3x, 7 equals 3x, x equals 7 thirds. Okay, so now I can just plug stuff in. 2 times y times dy dt equals dx dt times y plus x times dy dt. So that gives me 36 equals 3 dx dt plus, these will cancel, giving me 14. I'll subtract 14 from both sides. I'll get 22 divided by 3 equals dx dt. So 7d says 22 over 3. I like it. All right. Um, a nice related rates problem. Uh, problem number 8. We've got uh, consider the curve x squared plus 4y squared equals 7 plus 3y. Oh, there's an x there. Uh, part A, show. Okay. Show that dy dx equals 3y minus 2x, 8y minus 3x. So we'll take the derivative here and we'll get 2x plus 8y times dy dx equals derivative of that is 0. The derivative here is product rule 3y plus uh, 3x dx, oh, dy dx. And I'm going to move the dy dx to one side and the x's to the other. I'll get 8y dy dx minus 3x dy dx equals 3y minus 2x. I'll factor out a dy dx and then divide both sides to get dy dx er, by itself. 3y minus 2x 8y minus 3x, and we're done. There's part A. Part B. Part B says, show that there is a point P with the coordinate, x-coordinate of 3, for which the tangent line to the curve is horizontal. So if the tangent line is horizontal, um, that means that the derivative is equal to 0. And the derivative is equal to 0 when 3y minus 2x equals 0. And they told us the x-coordinate would be 3. So 3y minus 2 times 3, and 3y equals 6, and y equals 2. So there exists this ordered pair, 3, 2, where tangent is horizontal. And that's our point. Uh, yes, we found the y-coordinate. Done. There's part B. And what about part C? Find the second derivative. Second derivative. Oh, God. Second derivative. d2, y, d, x, 2. All right. This is quotient rule. Low d high 3 dy dx minus 2 minus i d low 8 dy dx minus 3 all over low 
squared. Ew. Okay. Um, and don't forget, I have to plug dy dx into these places. So, uh, find the value at that point. Does the curve have a local max, min, or neither at that point? Okay, so the ordered pair that we came up with for number 8 was 3, 2. So let's find dy dx at 3, 2. So at 3, 2, I have 6. Oh, we already know that's equal to 0. Duh. So that's equal to 0, and that's equal to 0. Oh, well, that's convenient. That makes things a lot easier. So um, if I now do dy dx evaluated at 3, 2, I get 16 minus 9, 3 times 0 minus 2, minus um, 6 minus... Ah, I hate the y's coming first. 16 minus 9. 6 minus 6, 0 times negative 3 all over 16 minus 9 squared. All right. This is going to be 0. This is going to be negative 2 times um, 7. Yes. 7 times negative 2 over 49, which is less than 0. So second derivative is less than 0, which means concave down with a 0 slope. So therefore, there is a max at 3, 2. All right, we've got a max at 3, 2 um, on that. And was there anything else? No, that's it. And we're all done with packet 10. Okay, I hope this was helpful and not too painful. And I hope you have a wonderful day.